Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. CJNG, the four-letter cartel run by Nemesio Osaguera Cervantes, aka El Mencho, ever since 2010, have been on a bloody mission to control as many states in Mexico as possible, vying for complete control of the drug market, as well as other illegal activities, including extortion, migrant smuggling, and fuel theft, among others. Notably, states such as Colima, Michoacan, Guerrero, Zacatecas, and Veracruz, to name a few, have all seen an increase in violent crime and murder ever since Cartel Jalisco entered the aforementioned states. They leave a trail of destruction everywhere they go, and in 2024, they aim to become the undisputed and most powerful drug cartel in Mexico. All of that stands in their way would be the Sinaloa cartel, who still, in many people's opinion, occupy the number one spot. Though, in recent months, several high-ranking capos of the Sinaloa Federation have been captured, including one of the sons of El Chapo, Ovidio Guzman, aka El Raton, as well as other high-ranking members of the Los Chapitos faction of the Sinaloa cartel. With law enforcement seemingly going all out to target Los Chapitos, a faction of the Sinaloa cartel ran by the sons of El Chapo, many have speculated this may give CJNG an advantage in acquiring the number one spot in the drug industry. A spot that they have waged all out brutality attempting to acquire. Ever since their inception, Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion have become known for their extreme hyperviolence, much like the Zetas before them. As a result, CJNG have utilized social media in order to get their message across. From threats to the general population, police and rivals, to full-blown graphic execution videos. In today's video, we will cover a recent CJNG clip released in the last few days. But nevertheless, let's take a delve into the depraved world of Cartel Jalisco, Nueva Generacion. In recent months, the Jalisco-based crime crew have been increasing their presence in Mexico State, in particular, the country's capital of Mexico City. Reports indicate that the gang have been engaging in crimes such as extortion against local business owners as well as against the general population. During late January of 2024, the CJNG tried to perpetrate a kidnapping in Cuajimalpa, according to local mayor, Adrian Rubalcava. He detailed that the criminals tried to collect a ransom from the relatives of two young people, whom they forced to stay in a room on the 10th floor of a hotel located in the vicinity of Santa Fe. However, the parents of the victims managed to contact the authorities, who mounted an operation to rescue the children. Somehow, nobody was arrested in this case, though the two young people in the incident were luckily freed. Incidents like this have been popping off in recent months, many believed to have been perpetrated by CJNG. Even more disturbing, authorities found the head of a man inside a cooler, abandoned in the vicinity. The gruesome discovery was made on Tuesday the 30th of January 2024. A white cooler was found on the sidewalk inside a red clothing bag, along with a poster with a threatening message. The threat, signed by Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generacion, was addressed to alleged kidnappers and drug traffickers imprisoned in the Northern Prison. The victim has yet to be identified, though according to the narco banner left with the severed head, they insinuate that the man was involved in extortion, hence why CJNG killed him. Kinda rich considering they have been accused of doing the very same thing in the surrounding areas. The narco banner reads as follows. We're not extortionists like you've clearly demonstrated to everyone from your prison facilities. You damn dogs, we've come to take you out. And the following are next. Chivo, Tomate, Juan, Tuna, Brandon, Karim, Gary, from the Union de Tapito. The Familia Michoacana operatives in Iztacalco and the southern neighborhoods. We're taking all of you guys the fuck out. 
The same goes for every scumbag extortionist, kidnappers, dope dealers who work for Tavo, Macero and Los Changos, from the San Pedro Martin, Volcanes, San Andres, La Hidalgo and the Santa Domingo neighbourhoods, as well as its surroundings. We know all about your alliances and orders from the northern prison. Macero, Yeo, Willy, Polo and Alexis from Union Tepito keep bothering the working people of Mexico City. We are in legion with the local residents and merchants, from the chewing gum salesmen to the biggest businesses around. Sincerely, CJNGM2 and Jaguar. You fucking bitches, we are the absolute Sierra mob. So as you heard, typical narco propaganda. In relation to the severed head, more was revealed in the coming days as a graphic video was released online, highly suspected to show the terror, torment and pain in which the victim went through prior to his demise. Although this has yet to be confirmed as the victim, it's highly suspected that the severed head found belonged to the man in the video. As mentioned, the note was signed off by Jaguar, or El Jaguar, who seems to be a regional boss of CJNG. Saulo David Sanchez Latina, aka El Jaguar, is 34 years old and is a member of the CJNG primarily operating in Tabasco. In addition to being accused of leading an alleged human trafficking network, his alleged modus operandi would be the following. He convinces sex workers across Latin America to come to Mexico under the promise of better pay as well as accommodation, and upon arrival, he tells them that they have a debt of 120,000 pesos, so they will have to work for him and his criminal network. In many cases, these women travel to Mexico illegally, so going to the authorities is not an option. In early January of 2024, it was reported that eight women from Colombia were abducted at a party in Tabasco and subsequently went missing. A few days later, in mid-January, it was reported in Mexican media that eight of the women were found and rescued by authorities. They were believed to have been abducted by CJNG to then be forced into prostitution. It's said that El Jaguar paid for the women to travel to Mexico and invited them to the party, which is where he and his crew abducted the women. Interestingly, the Attorney General's Office of the State of Tabasco denied that the eight young Colombian women reported missing had been kidnapped. The story was then subsequently buried by the media. Aside from his alleged human trafficking operation, not too much else is known about El Jaguar. But nevertheless, what happens in the actual video? The video itself is 2 minutes and 20 seconds in length, and many aspects of the clip are strange, to say the least. As mentioned, the man who was murdered was left with a note accompanying his severed head, signed by CJNG, and this matches up with the rhetoric spewed by the Sicarios in the actual video. A Sicario, with a very distinctive voice, reads out the exact same statement as was left on the note with the severed head. Some comments suggested that the Sicario reading out the statement may not even be Mexican, but actually that he may be from somewhere else in Latin America, though this isn't true. His voice is gravelly, croaky and deep, almost like a smoker's voice. The man's name is Arturo Bravo Granados, and shortly after the graphic video was released, he was arrested after being located by authorities in a cartel safe house. His mugshot was released to the public and went somewhat viral on Spanish social media due to the man's clothing. In his mugshot, he was wearing an NWA shirt, Narcos with Attitude, and on the shirt, it has pictures of El Chapo and El Mayo, both in the lower cartel kingpins. Not a good look for a supposed CJNG Sicario, to say the least. Four other men were also arrested along with Arturo, and at the scene, cartel uniforms were found, as well as military gear and footage of the murder that Arturo was involved in. Although Jaguar was mentioned on the narco banner left with the body, 
police suspect that Omar Ramses, aka El Kalaka, may have had a hand in the murder, as he is a regional CJNG boss in the area of Mexico City. The video itself appears to have been shot in a cartel safe house. You see a flag covering the wall in the background with the letters CJNG crudely written on it. You see the victim, who is laying down on the floor. His hands have been tied up, and his mouth and eyes have been covered in what appears to be duct tape. There are at least five to six Sicarios in the room, possibly more, all of which are armed with various weaponry. Some are holding ARs, while one is continuously pointing a pistol at the captive's head while the Sicario reads out the statement. Another man is carrying what appears to be a butcher's meat cleaver. Music is also blaring in the background, possibly to drown out any potential screams. In the room, you also see what appears to be a large bucket or drum. The victim has clearly already been injured, possibly beaten, as there are droplets of blood around the room on the floor. After the Sicario reads out the statement, the victim is then grabbed by his coat and dragged off the floor. He is then taken to the barrel, and they then lean him over the barrel. The barrel contains water. The victim tries his best to avoid being lent over the bucket, but he can't due to his restraints, and he is quickly overpowered by the Sicarios. The Sicario carrying the meat cleaver then enters the fray. As the man is leaning over the barrel, the Sicario grabs him by the hair and begins to slice his throat with the meat cleaver. The victim, through his gag, tries to scream, but immediately his throat fills with blood, making a sound akin to someone being sick mixed with gurgling. As the Sicario slices away, the water in the barrel immediately begins to turn blood red. After a few seconds, it doesn't even look like water anymore, just blood. The Sicario slices the victim's throat in the windpipe area and then slices around his neck, possibly severing the carterid artery. However, he doesn't behead the victim on camera. Instead, after he sufficiently slashed the victim's throat and neck, he then just holds the victim's head up slightly by the hair, aiding him in bleeding out. You hear the blood droplets hit the water, and the only sounds the victim makes is the sound of wheezing coming out of his severed throat. A wheezing sound that is all too familiar at this point. As the man is being left to bleed out, the wheezing sounds then turn into almost snoring sounds, which get quieter and quieter as the man continues to lose blood. The video ends as the man is still bleeding out. The victim was subsequently beheaded, presumably off camera. It's unclear whether the rest of the man's body was ever found. This particular case highlights CJNG's growing involvement in the state of Mexico, in particular Mexico City, the capital of Mexico itself. Mexico City and Mexico State are areas in which haven't been too badly affected by drug cartels in recent years. It hasn't really been a hotspot for drug cartels, so the reason for CJNG's sudden appearance in the state is strange to say the least, though we shall see how it progresses in the coming months. Not only have CJNG been getting active in Mexico State, they have also seen an increased presence in the state of Tabasco. On a video released to social media, several CJNG Sicarios stand in unison, heavily armed and dressed in combat fatigue, as a narrator reads out a statement. This message is for you, Daniel Hernandez, aka LH, or Prada, leader of the Varadora. You think you're slick because you have all of the authorities and its members brought off, many of which are former Zetas. Paludo, aka El Mudo, Kevin, Nieta, aka El Poli, Luna, aka El Guason, or 50, Cello Gordo and Chucky. All of these individuals are former workers of Tono Guizar. These are the investigators of violence that citizens in the state of Tabasco are currently dealing with. Stop making people believe that you're part of El Jardinero's mob. 
Let it be made clear that the CJNG doesn't support kidnappers, thieves, rapists, extortionists, or Zetas. Come on out to face us for that armed confrontation. Stop hurting the citizenry by touching their vehicles and attacking the merchants. This is the only thing that you guys know how to do. We're already in position here. We are Mencho's brother-in-law's mob, and we're going to purge the state of all of these scumbags. Mr. President, this war isn't against your government, but it is against these filthy individuals who have your home state terrorized. The Sicarios then scream in unison. We are Mencho's brother-in-law's mob. For those who don't know, El Mencho's brother-in-law is 51-year-old Abigail Gonzalez Valencia, a man who Mencho has worked with all the way back to the days of the Milenio Cartel. He's the brother of Mencho's wife, Rosalinda Gonzalez Valencia. The Valencia family are known as Los Queenies, and Abigail, along with his 18 brothers, have worked closely with Mencho for decades. Los Queenies are believed to have been the financial arm of CJNG, helping with logistics as well as money laundering. The Sicarios in the video are likely tied to a member or members of the Los Queenies faction. As for La Baradura, the gang who CJNG have called out, they are a smaller criminal organization, primarily operating in the city of Acapulco and the state of Guerrero, though they have some presence in other states, such as Tabasco. Originally, it seems CJNG and La Baradura were in a working relationship with each other. However, in recent months, that relationship, for whatever reason, has evaporated, which will potentially result in yet more bloodshed. For whatever reason, CJNG distanced themselves from La Baradura, despite previously them having been linked to El Jardinero, a high-ranking CJNG boss. La Baradura originated in and around 2010 following the fracture of the Beltran Labour organization. Tabasco is a state of interest to CJNG due to its close proximity to Chiapas, which in itself is a border state next to Guatemala. Chiapas has seen increased cartel presence in the past 24 months, primarily due to its border with Guatemala. The area is important, as whoever controls the border controls drug distribution into Mexico, as well as controlling the movement of migrants, allowing them to profit off human trafficking. Heading back to Tabasco, at the same time as CJNG released their video threatening La Baradora, a graphic execution video was also released online. There is some debate in regards to which gang released the video, with some suspecting them to be CJNG, whereas others claim them to be related to La Baradora. The video itself is 1 minute and 2 seconds in length. As you play the video, the person filming pans the camera around a field as multiple Sicarios, and we're talking possibly 50 or 60, stand in formation, all heavily armed, wearing the exact same uniform. They wear black tactical gear, with some sort of acronym stitched into their tactical vests. I can't see the acronym, but to me, it doesn't look like it's related to CJNG. As the camera is panning around, showing the hitmen, a man can be heard reading a statement, and he states the following. For all of the filth that thinks they're involved with organized crime, a cartel, or that recruits kids, you've all seen that this isn't a game. Therefore, be on your fucking toes, because once we descend on our enemies, there won't be any unpaid debts with us. We're coming after you guys, wherever you decide to run to. And once we capture you, this is how your lives will end. The only group in charge here will be the absolute Grupo Elite of the Cabiles and Grupo Delta. We've been trained not to have any fear. If you're not on our side, then you're against us. We will eventually capture every individual that is out there being a snitch. The message ends there. Nearing the end of a statement, the camera pans around far enough so that you can see a captive on his knees, with multiple Sicarios standing behind him. The man is heavily set. He has his hands tied behind his back, 
and his shirt has been ripped up and is stained with blood. The cameraman is quite far away from the incident, but you see that one of the Sicarios is viciously slashing the victim's throat with a knife. At the end of the statement, the cameraman then zooms into the man being murdered. Two Sicarios hold the victim in place, one holding his hair while the other holds his arms, and a third can be seen hacking and slicing away with a combat knife at the victim's throat. Despite the cameraman being relatively far away, you still hear the sound of a blade cutting through flesh, and you hear the squelching wet sounds the blade makes as it cuts through the man's throat. The Sicario cuts all around the victim's throat and neck until he then takes the knife and starts hacking away at the back of the victim's neck, attempting to sever the spine. The chopping cracking sounds that the blade makes when hitting the spine fill the empty field before the video then ends. Some claim the clip to be from CJNG due to the person reading the statement mentioning Grupo Elite and Grupo Delta, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it is indeed CJNG. The uniforms in which the Sicarios were wearing certainly didn't look like Cartel Jalisco gear. Others claim the killing to have been perpetrated by La Baradora. But anyway, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it, if you can enjoy this sort of content. Just a quick PSA, I'd like to thank you guys for all of the support that you've shown me over the last few days. Of course we were having issues with YouTube, demonetizing my channel, we appealed it and appealed it successfully, but I'd like to thank you guys for all of the support that you've shown me, whether it be DMs of encouragement, uh, you guys retweeting my stuff talking about my issues, uh, retweeting YouTube, telling them to get on it. Thank you guys so, so much. It's much appreciated, and the support was quite frankly a little overwhelming. So thank you guys very much. Also, I'd like to shout out a channel by the name of The Creepy Fox, who also helped me uh, during my, my uh, appeal procedure. So The Creepy Fox, he came at me with some great advice, off his own back, we had no correspondence previously. Uh, the, the Creepy Fox, you're a lifesaver. Thank you very much. Please check his channel out. Since what has happened happened, I have been thinking about ways to expand my content, I guess I would say. And I have come to the decision to make a Patreon. Everything on this channel will remain as it is. I want to stress that. This is purely your choice, obviously. On Patreon, I want to talk about other subjects. There will be some exclusive videos like the ones I do on this channel. But mainly, I want an avenue to expand my horizons and talk about what I want to talk about. Not necessarily relating to the content I cover here. So for example, we may, we may delve into conspiracy theories, things like that. Uh, current events, etc. Sharing my two cents on what is going on in the world. I want like a campfire type of discussion environment. And I'm sure I will think of other perks as well. So if you could check it out, it would be much appreciated. Aside from that, once again, I would like to thank you guys for the support. It's been amazing. If you could follow me on Twitter, we're nearly at 6,000 followers on Twitter. If you could bump me up, that would be amazing. And also, if you could follow me on Twitch as well. Maybe I'm asking too much now, but thank you guys so much. But anyway... As always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.